Sherry Berman Lawrence is a two-time Emmy-winning makeup designer whose work can be seen this season on the last season of Pose. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby. And, and, and Sherry, I, I guess the first question is, you know, what has this show meant to you over the course of the time you've worked on it? Oh my gosh, it, it's, you know, it, it's meant so much to me on, on a professional level and a personal level. On a professional level, um, just the creativity that, that we, we got to um, explore on this show with the ball scenes and just the different characters and, and that they all have very specific looks. So it was always fun designing, you know, what their what their style was for for the the season or or what their backstory was once the the season started started going and then on a personal level i mean i i just i learned so much about myself and my place in the world and my responsibility to the world and you know especially to the lbgtq Plus community and especially of color, um, you know, we we really became a family on this show, and so um, it was it was a it was just a really special connection and bond with the actresses and the directors and writers and creators and the crew. It just so we were all in this. Um, uh, learning experience together too just had just I learned more about the the trans community that I thought I knew about but I learned on a different level and I, I I learned how to be an ally I learned just a lot a lot about myself and my place in the world I I feel like this sh the show brought the ball culture the ballroom culture to so many people I think who had no ideas about what it was. How, how familiar with you were with the ball, ballroom culture before you started on this show? I mean, I wasn't that familiar with it. I mean, I'd seen Paris is Burning and, you know, I knew it on, on that level, but um, actually really diving in and, and researching and, and, and just learning more about um, the lives then and even now and where the ball scene is at this point. Um, so I learned a lot more about it than I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> the show just has such a unique look, but it, it, it is at its heart, it is definitely a period piece. Does that period, uh, does that influence uh, the makeup choices that you make in terms of the time period? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, again, each character was very specific. And when we started out, we were in the eighties. So, um, you know, you, you think of the eighties and you think of the bright neons and the purples and the pinks and the violets and the, uh, all of that, which we, we definitely, we definitely used and the, you know, Cindy Lauper blocked eyeshadows and <laughs> things like that. That that was a big candy thing. We love doing that on candy. But then also, you know, we 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 took a lot of research from, you know, TV shows like Dynasty, like Electra is all Dynasty, like head to toe Dynasty. And then, you know, um uh Angel had her own specific look for when she was at the piers and she's just so beautiful like you, you know you you could pretty much do anything to her and and it just looks amazing so i i had a very like specific coppery you know edgier look when she was at the piers and then she was a lot softer but but made up because you know the, these women were trying to pass in the world so they always had makeup um the one exception to that was blanca she, I mean, we, there was a whole um, episode um, that she has with, with Angel. I think it was season, oh my goodness, it was either season one or season two. They're all <laughs> kind of running together now um, where she's talking about how easy it is for Angel to pass and not for her. And so, you know, when we designed her look, we were thinking, okay, you know, drugstore colors and we we actually went to drugstores and pulled the mousiest looking colors going oh this will be perfect you know like she's just a little off you know her foundation was even a little off and um 
unfortunately, MJ is so beautiful too that that it was like, dang, that didn't work. Like we, we need to go mousier with this. And so she was the one that was a little more laid back um, with her her makeup, and she didn't wear nails, and everyone else had the long nails, and you know all of that. But um, but her character actually evolved over over the years too. So so when we started in the eighties. Then we jumped ahead um, to uh, 91, 92 in season two. And there's not, there wasn't that much time that passed between the two seasons, but, you know, Angel becomes a model. So she's a little more on trend than, than the rest. The rest, you know, everyday people kind of keep a, keep a look for a while. And then a trend will come out and then maybe a couple of years later, they'll catch up to that trend. And, you know, so it's not, it's not like you see this makeup trend and you, you walk around and everyone's got this graphic eyeliner and, you know, stuff like that. It takes a while before you, you, you the everyday person does that. So um, the only one that really kind of jumped right into the trends was, was Angel, but we did shift um, a little bit more towards the Browns and the the taupe and the the brown lip with the darker liner and um, red Viva Glam lipstick. Like I wouldn't walk out of my house without Viva Glam lipstick in the '90s. So um, <laughs> we did switch towards that. And then by the time we got to season three, we were fully, fully, fully into to that, and way less of the the purples and the pinks. Um, we would do some like soft pinks and things like that, but not as neon and bright as we did season one. I, I, I would imagine that this is a collaborative uh, uh, relationship that you have, particularly with the actresses. Um, what was your, how did, how did you all work together? Did they uh, contribute things to, to their own looks? You know, I was so lucky on this job because first of all, working for someone like Ryan Murphy, uh, there's just no limit to what you can do. And, and he really gives you the space to, to be as, you know, outgoing and, and, and creative as, as you want to be. And so that was super refreshing. And then working with, you know, we started off, um, Lou Eirich was the costume designer and Chris Clark was the hair designer. And then as season one came closer to an end, Ana Lucia McGordy became the designer and Barry Lee Moe became the, the hair designer. Um, we were all so super collaborative with each other. And it was, it was almost like a, um, I, I've never experienced anything quite like this. It would, you would read something and you would have a, an image in your head from the script of what you wanted it to be. And then you'd get together with Anna and she would bring the costume ideas and then Barry and the hair and they would just always they were just always so in sync and it happened just time and time again. It was like we were really on the same page. So we really knew what we wanted to do. So, you know, the looks on Pose were always so thought out. Um, we were always prepared and knew what we were going to do before the actress would sit in our chairs. Our, my whole team would. Um, and the actresses were just so open and trusting that they just let us do our thing. Now, if there was something they really didn't like, then they might say something, but I don't, I can't, I can't even think of a time where that happened. I mean, they're just so open and just let us do our job. They did their job, hair and costumes did theirs and it all just kind of work together. So it was a lot of freedom with that. And I have an amazing team too. And Nikki Illum, who has been my key makeup artist and now assistant um, department head, I've worked with her for over a decade and we can just read each other's minds as well. So, so she, she was key to this. And, th and this season, um, uh, we had season one and season two, Deja Smith and Andrew Sotomayor and Chris M uh, Malone were there. And this year we had Jai Williams and um, um, Charles Zambrano and uh, Sean uh, Gibson. And it just, we had a great team. Like they're all better makeup artists than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Too modest, I think. Um, <laughs> um, Let's talk about some specifics in season three, because I think uh, 
one of the, I think I can imagine that one of the challenges is that you're really tackling two things. You're really tackling um, the, you're, you're continuing with the evolution of the ballroom culture, but you also have really kind of what is the climax of the AIDS crisis uh, in these episodes. So, so what, what kind of challenges do each of those present? You know, we, fortunately I work on the normal heart, so I was a little prepared, <laughs> um, but you know, we, we touched on this in season one and season two, but we really go there and see what people's lives are living and dying with, with AIDS in season three. And, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's really difficult to, to do, um, but you have to learn how to compartmentalize and go from one day you're shooting a big, you know, glorious once upon a time ball. And then the next day someone's dying of AIDS, you know? So um, this season, we really, uh, we showed a lot of protest and several people um, throughout the season uh, with, with AIDS and either with prosthetics or us painting them and using transfers to make them more gaunt and, you know, it just, uh, you just, you just learn to compartmentalize. And then there's a lot of crying when you leave work. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. I mean, it, it started with, um, you know, working with when, when Candy dies in season is murdered in season two, that also was a really difficult time. The week we were shooting that three trans women were murdered. Um, so it was like um, working with Angelica Ross and, and Deja Smith that did her makeup and I would help with the, you know, effects on her. And um, it, it, it's, I, I felt, I, I took on a lot of how they must be feeling and really just, and, and everyone around us um, to the point that you know, when I went home, I would cry. I would, I would just sob. And, and that happened a lot this year too, but you just release it and, and compartmentalize. It is, it's tricky on this one though. Cause like in the normal heart, you're, you're just in it, you know? And uh, Aaron Kruger McCash designed that, which is how I even got involved with Pose in the first place. Um, she's, she's an amazing makeup artist and, uh, she really taught me a lot about, you know, the looks and working with her so closely on, on the normal heart um, really taught me a lot. But on that movie, you know, you were just in it the whole time. So there was no compartmentalizing. You were just kind of living that world. And that was, that was tough. And then now it's just, it, it, it's, it, there's just so many different parts of, of, that are the the dark side of what you know trans women dealt with and and just the lgbtq plus community dealt with then so yeah it, it's difficult and then you're in a ball you know? so it's it's tricky going back and forth i would have to uh, i would imagine that the that the ball scenes are they as are they are they more pressure because they are so fabulous and and you know so so much entertainment? Are those more pressure or are is that just straight out fun all the way through? Um, it's both. Um, <laughs> I mean, the show in general. I, I'll I'll say this: we season one we never did the same look twice on anyone, and so it kind of became this challenge with us. Not unless it was like a specific look for a specific thing. So it kind of became this like, you know, just to us, a little challenge, like, oh, how, how, what look am I going to do today? And that's a lot of looks over three seasons on these ladies. So we, it kind of became this fun challenge with us that we did. So, but then the balls, you know, you could just do anything. So, but yeah, there, there was a lot of pressure to live up to, you know, everyone always talks about the balls and like, oh, that looked amazing. And you just have to keep up with that level. And, and on top of the fact that, that, you know, you want the actresses, Stephen Canals, Janet Mock and Ryan Murphy all to think 
that ball is the best ball they've ever seen. So every time it was like, okay, what are we doing this time? You know, it really depended on whether they were walking or not too. Um, but it was just so much fun. Like I'll never get to experience anything like that. It was fun shooting them. It was hard. And we would have, we would be there for six hours before the crew would even show up. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was time for us to go to lunch by the time people were showing up for work. Um, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, the show was a lot, but, but it just, the energy and just the music and hearing Billy Porter do his thing. And it just was, it was pretty amazing. There's a really special ball coming up uh, this season too, that, that I'm excited for everyone to see. Lots of Swarovski crystals and waterproofing of makeup and, um, you know, matching that same look, non-waterproof and just you know, <laughs> removal of makeup and a vanity and one little wipe. And there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of fun things still coming up. I, I would imagine that all of, you talked a lot about all of the looks. Is there one look that you can think of just off the top of your head that you're like that look, that's my favorite. You know, I get asked that a lot, um, but, and yes, there, uh, every time I say one, I go, oh, but then you know, <laughs> I have to say there, there, the, the very first ball we ever did was the Royals. And when we did that, that was such an incredible experience and those costumes and just, you know, it was my first ball and it was, so that was, that was pretty special. And I loved it so much. And we did all these weird Cupid's bow lips on everyone and everyone had a specific color palette and, you know, Grace Jones for Electra. And it was my first time to get to really just throw it all out there. But then this season with well, then there's also the Marie Antoinette with her. That was that was a lot of fun too. But this season, when we just did the Once Upon a Time ball, that <laughs> I'll never forget. I was on set with Ana Lucia, and I think we were shooting a ball at the time. And Ryan Murphy comes up to us and says, I think we're going to do a Once Upon a Time ball. And we had like a week to get that together. And, and at first I, you know, my eyes got really big. And then as he's like talking about it, cause listening to him be creative is one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> I mean, creativity that comes out of that man is unbelievable. But as he's talking about it, I'm, I, I realize like I'm smiling ear to ear and so is Anna. And we're like looking at each other going, yes. And oh, you want Rapunzel's hair to go the length of the ballroom floor. Where's Barry? (laughs) (laughs) And it's just so that was that was fun. And 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 I really like I had a lot of ideas very quickly behind what each one of those looks were. And we handmade, you know, all those those face appliques and like sat there with a, a glue gun and built the frames of them and and um just like, you know, like Electra's face was very jewel tone, like her face was a crown and Blanca had the butterflies hand laid all across her face going up into the ribbon. And then, you know, Angel with her, you know, dagger earrings and this like gothic little red riding hood with the graphic liner and that, you know, I almost wanted to make a, a, a red mask for her face. And then Candy, you know, Sleeping Beauty, I wanted just like a meadow on her face. And so, and then Lulu as Rapunzel, all the rhinestones were, you know, representative of, of the, um, you know, Rapunzel's teardrops. And so it, it just like, that's what I mean. Like you, I'll, that was amazing. And so quick too, that, that I just, I'll never forget that. Well, and now you've also put me, uh, put the idea of my head of a, of a new dynasty with Electra as Alexis Carrington. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. everybody go to goldderby.com, uh, make your predictions for the Emmys and stay tuned for more interviews with, uh, with contenders throughout the season. Uh, Sherry Berman Lawrence, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you.